was about four months pregnant. I had a dream. I woke up feeling really worried and tense and nervous. And I felt strongly that there was something wrong. Wrong with the baby. But I didn't know what. About a fortnight before Sam was due to be born, we went for a checkup and uh, they found that there was problems with the, the trace, the heart trace. So they said to us then that they, they think there's a problem with the baby's heart, so we're going to have to induce you and the baby will be born today. When Sam was first seen uh, just over a month old, he had um, a blocked aorta. He uh, also had a small hole between the two pumping chambers of the, of the heart. We thought that hole would probably close on its own and um, concentrated at that stage on dealing with the narrow tube. Where we chopped out the narrow segments and, and joined the two ends together and that operation went, went fine. He was then followed up in the clinic and uh, seemed to also be doing quite well, but the hole never did close, and ultimately, um, when he was uh, over a year old, we decided to close the hole between the two pumping chambers of the heart. It seemed to be fairly routine with the problems that he had, you know. They didn't foresee any, any major problems with that. And you believe that a routine operation, was, all right, it's serious, but they'll get him through it. So I'm quite an optimistic sort of person on that side of things, you know. Whereas Sue, I think, was pretty worried about it all, a lot more than I was, so. I felt guilty that Sam had heart problems because carrying a child and giving birth something that I just did wrong. It's my fault that he had the problems. I produced a defective child. When you operate on the heart, uh, to open it up to close a, a hole, it's necessary to stop the heart for a period of time. So you have to use a machine called a heart-lung machine, which takes over the function of the heart and the lungs by bypassing the blood around the heart and allows you to open it and look inside. And uh, we close the hole, closed up the heart, and then you can allow blood to flow back through the heart to its own coronary arteries, and it just didn't perform in the way that we would expect a heart to beat straight after an operation. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, Sam, you know, what's happening? Because she's been there six or seven hours now. She's supposed to be about three hours. Yeah. I think it was then that we were told that there was, um, they were starting to get really concerned because uh, Sam just didn't seem to want to come off the bypass machine. And obviously, if, if Sam won't come off the bypass machine, that's uh, a really, really serious thing because... Obviously, it was because his heart wouldn't start, so, you know, that possibly was going to be the end of the line. What I'd feared all along was happening. And at that point, I didn't think that he would... Survive. I haven't had much chance of surviving, which is why we had him christened. Sam, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son. All we could see was his head and his golden hair. The lights made his hair golden and he looked like an angel. That was terrible. I would have done anything to keep that child. After a while, you become numb about things. You just, you know, you, you go through so many emotions in, in such a short space of time that in the end, you just, 
walk around in a daze or sit there like staring at the floor and that. And uh, basically, you just sit there trying to will him on and just hope. So it, it's pretty hard, the feeling of helplessness. Sue had all of her family there, and I had my mum and dad there. But um, I, I didn't seem to be out of hand or having them around me. I was having enough trouble coming around, getting to terms with my grief and everything, without having to try to, to cope with other people's. I'm all right. Yes, I am. No, we can do the help. No, just for Christ's sake, leave me alone! I feel if I would have been around Sue and the rest of the family, I've dealt with them, got to be strong for them. And uh, quite frankly, I didn't feel I could be strong for me, let alone, you know, give anyone else support. So I didn't feel I was much use to anybody. So I, I just went off and basically just walked around the hospital and uh, you know, kept out of everyone's way. I wanted to be close to Steve when Sam was going through so much. I wanted to be able to talk to him and hold his hand and be close to him, but he just totally rejected me and didn't want to talk to me, didn't want to listen, didn't want to be near me. Really hurt at the time. We've tried coming off ECMO again mm. and there's, there's really no function minimal function from his own heart. It's just not pumping blood around at all. We asked if there was a chance that, you know, what about possibilities of doing a transplant? And uh, we were told that, in theory, that's OK, but you need a heart to do a transplant. And uh, obviously, we just can't go and get one like that. So uh, we, it was said that um, it was possible to keep Sam in um, possibly in a reasonable enough condition to accept a donor for another three days and uh, so basically they give themselves three days to find Sam a heart. We were quoted odds of something like a million to one. It said, you know, you really, really are clutching at straws. Hi, Ita. Good morning. How are we doing? Um, we're doing okay at the moment. Adrenaline's on 4.5. At the end of a few days of ECMO, with Sam now showing no signs of recovery of his heart, I had to make a decision with the rest of the team whether we should continue to run the ECMO. And we started to, we agreed with them that we would discontinue the ECMO support, fully expect him to, to die. I actually found myself giving, basically giving Sam permission to die if, if he'd had enough. Feeling, feeling like now is a bit strange, you know, giving your son permission to die, but do I look to him? He was the only one that had the right to decide that. machine's off, he'll be on his own, and we know that his own heart can't pump blood around. So at that stage, we'll take all this away and give him back to you to hold. So we'll do it as, as nicely as we can. So I'm just going to start doing that. Right. Pump down to three quarters flow eater. That's about three quarters, though. 